my salvation. Say, Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my righteousness. We cannot forget to give thanks that we as a church we are built up, we are built up. We grow in grace daily as we grow in knowledge. He says that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And it's happening right from our house here. Makopo the whole world is getting filled with the knowledge of the word of God right knowledge accurate knowledge 
precise knowledge makorobo soto bayata e robo soto e prata yata e prata yata e praya tata 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 Ekapaya, 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 Ekopoyota, 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 Eporoshata, Eporoshata, Ekoborasha, Ekoborosata. Lift your voice this morning and declare Makopo Shotayata. As we behold, we all with open face, Makopo Shatayataya, Ekaporoshatayata. We behold the glory of the Lord, Marobo Shotoboyata. Rakatanayata, Brakoto Poshata, open face with open face, Makopo Sajata. We behold his glory this morning as our Papa is standing here to preach, Makoporo Satayata, Ekaporo Satayata, Makapoyata, with open face. We all in this house and all over the world beholding the glory of the Lord, we are changed into the image of that word. He says, I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Lift your two hands and wave them to Jesus. Wave those hands unto Jesus. As we get sent this morning to receive the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name. I say, in the name of Jesus, let's just celebrate the presence of our Papa and Mama with a good club in the house and a good shout. Somebody shout glory! Those two hands still lifted above your head, putting them together with a joyful shout. Let's receive our Papa, Dr. Ebe Davina. And that doctor is double, double, double. <laughs> hands to heaven father we rejoice that this morning we have access into the deep things of god by the holy ghost thank you for your precious holy written word that is available to us and thank you for the grace of insight the ability to see into your thoughts into your mind into your intent your purpose into your design and your program for our lives and we rejoice that this day we walk worthy of the lord unto all pleasing we are fruitful unto every good work I decree that the eyes of each one's understanding flooded with light, bodies and yokes are destroyed. Whatever is not planted by God is rooted out. And we declare that nobody leaves this service the same way they came. We give you praise, glory, and honor for answered prayer. In Jesus' precious name, and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together. As we say these words, I am born of God. I am born of the world. The word of God... Is my nature. I do not struggle to do the world. I do the world naturally. Therefore, today I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus' name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. We well, want to welcome everybody connected to this service by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Instagram, all of the social media community, we, we want you to know we love you, we are so glad you are part of the service this morning and all of the Aquaibom State community connected to this service right now by way of Comfort FM, XL FM Radio Aquaibom, you know you FM Inspiration FM, Heritage FM, we just want to welcome all of you to the service this morning it's going to be an exciting time of study you don't want to leave your friends and loved ones out of this service, so call a friend, a loved one a family member 
Ask them to tune to this radio station right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. And all of you on social media, like you've always done, do me the same favor this morning. Let's get this world to the ends of the earth. Let's help people that are in darkness to see the great light of God's goodness. And I'd like you to share the video on your page, tag some people, put them on monogram, telegram, share with all the groups on your page, and put them on WhatsApp groups. Let's get the world to the ends of the earth. And you know we love you. We're glad you're here this morning. All our campuses around the world, we want to welcome everybody. And if you're just joining our service for the first time today, get ready. It's going to be an adventure in the word of his grace. Fasting your seatbelts as we have an exciting time of study. Are we excited to be in the house this morning? Can we give the Lord a great shout and celebrate the word of God this morning? Is that a shout or a wail? Can I have some great shout in this service? Glory! Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet, smart self this morning as we get into the word of his grace. Mm -mm -mm. Glory to God. Uh -uh. All right. This morning, I'm going to start a series that continues in the second service, continues on Wednesday, and continues next Sunday, first and second service on the miraculous. The miraculous. As a believer, from time to time in your life, you will always come to a place where you need a miracle. Where you need a miracle. And it's important for you to understand how to get a miracle whenever you need it. Now, so we're looking at when is the miraculous. When is the miraculous. You know, sometimes even someone who ministers miracles may not be conscious of how to receive miracles. You know, the things of God are taught. The things of God are explained. Christianity is based on knowledge. Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse number 3. John chapter 17, verse number 3. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee the only through God. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent, that they might know thee. That they might know thee. So, the life of God is the life of knowledge. The life of God is the life of knowledge. You know the word knowledge, to know. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6. Look at what brother Paul says in First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6. How be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet, not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Next verse. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Next verse. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Next verse. But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Next verse. But God hath, God hath, if your Bible was mine, I will underline that heart. God, because that changes the entire demographics. God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Next verse. Next verse. For what man knoweth, take note of knoweth, the things of a man. Save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Next verse. Now, we have received, take note of the tense, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. We have received. It's in our possession. The spirit which is of God that we might, that's the intent, that we might know. We already have the spirit. 
So, the next thing now is that the spirit in us is to enable us know the things that are freely given, already given, will not be given. Whether you know it or not, it has been given. <laughs> you know, it is not your knowing that will make God give it. Whether you know it or not, it has already been given to us. So, it is, it is to your benefit to know so you can deliberately walk in its reality. Okay, put up that scripture again for me. Given to us of God. Next verse. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. But which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Next verse. 14 now. Observe. But the natural man, talking about the unbeliever, all right? The natural man receiveth not. He receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Next verse. <clears throat> but he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet, he himself is judged of no man. Next verse. For, for who had known the mind of the Lord, that he might or may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. That is, we have the understanding of Christ. In other words, in Christianity... We have come to know. We have come to know. Christianity is a knowledge-based faith. Christianity is a knowledge-based faith. God is a God of knowledge. Christianity is a knowledge-based faith. In Matthew chapter 28 verse 19, Matthew 28 verse 19 go ye therefore and teach did you see that go ye therefore what we call the great commission is a teaching commission go ye therefore and teach all nations teach all nations verse 20 observe again teaching them teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even unto the end of the world so christianity is a faith that is communicated by knowledge is a faith that is communicated by knowledge you observe the book of Romans where he says, how can they hear without a preacher? And how can the preacher preach except he be sent? Then he concluded by saying, so then, so then, faith by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Faith by hearing. Why? Because it is knowledge based. Faith by hearing. Christianity is not sentiment based. It is not feeling based. It is faith based. Faith by hearing. Hearing by the message of Christ. And so things are taught in Christianity. If you look at the ministry of Jesus, 75% of the time he was teaching. He was teaching. He was teaching. He taught those who believed. He taught those who did not believe. And those who did not believe, he taught more. He taught more. Those who did not believe. Because you see, what we call evangelism today is supposed to be a teaching meeting. Evangelism is supposed to be a teaching meeting where people are taught the riches of Christ. Where people are taught the riches of Christ. It's not supposed to be an entertainment show. It's supposed to be a teaching meeting. Because people will not come to a place of faith until they are taught. Until they hear. Until they hear. Somebody cannot just be saved because he's a nice person. It takes the word of faith 
effectively communicated to generate faith in the heart of an unbeliever to be saved. It has to be taught. The word must be taught. We don't assume in Christianity. What you don't know, you don't know. You have to be taught. And you must make up your mind and accept your status in your mind that you are a student. That as a child of God, you are a student ready to learn. Ready to learn. It's critical. Now, observe. So, Jesus keeps teaching. In fact, he was given a prominent name, teacher. His name was teacher. You know, those of you who went to primary schools in the village, like me, you know that in the village, those who taught us in school, their prominent name in the village was teacher. They didn't even know their name. If their name was like Mr. Akbar, nobody calls them Akbar. It's just teacher, teacher. Did you see teacher? Did you pass by teacher's house? Because that is what they are known for. So Jesus was fondly called and prominently called teacher. The rich young ruler called him good teacher. Good teacher, what can I do to inherit eternal life? In John chapter 3, Nicodemus called him rabbi. Rabbi. Rabbi is a Jewish short form for those who explain the Jewish scriptures. Rabbi, thou art a teacher sent from God. And no man can do these things that thou doest except God be with him. He called him rabbi. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 28, please pay attention. Matthew chapter 7 verse 28. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these this sayings. The people were astonished. They were astonished at his doctrine. The word doctrine there is the word explanation or teaching. By the scalia. They were astonished at his doctrine, his teaching or explanation. Look at the next verse 29. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. He taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So, it says they were astonished at his doctrine. So, the breath of Jesus' ministry was primarily teaching and preaching. The breath of Jesus' ministry. Look at Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. Matthew chapter 4 verse number 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching. He went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Then look at what follows the teaching ministry. And healing. Go back to verse 23. And healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Healing all manner. All. All sorts. All kinds. All sorts. All kinds. Healing. But it was after teaching. It was after teaching. Because what is prominent is the teaching. Why? It is knowledge based. Teaching. Are you observing? Look at the next verse. Verse number 24. <clears throat> and his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. And those which were possessed with devils. And those which were lunatic. And those that had the palsy. And he healed them. Healed them after teaching. Healed them after teaching. Look at Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. Matthew chapter 9 verse 35. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages. Teaching in their synagogues. And preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And healing every sickness. And every disease among the people. So, 
the core part of Jesus' ministry was to teach. That was the emphasis, the breath, the core, the crux of his ministry was to teach. It therefore means that Jesus wasn't going from place to place looking for the sick. He wasn't going around looking for sick people. Is there anybody here sick? Is there anybody here sick? No, that was not the focus. He went about teaching and teaching and teaching. And after teaching, if there were sick people, he healed them. But the, 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 the focus, the emphasis, the crux of his ministry was teaching the world. Teaching the world. Because every other thing in the Christian faith follows knowledge. Every other thing in the Christian faith follows knowledge. From salvation to every other thing. It follows knowledge. <clears throat> Are you still in the building? He was teaching oftentimes. The miracles, signs, and wonders are a product of having taught the people. They are a product of having taught the people. So, in other words, there's a whole lot of emphasis on the teaching of the world. On the teaching of the world. So, this morning, we want to look at the miraculous. When is the miraculous? Because you need to learn to identify when is the miraculous. <clears throat> you know, some people somehow are not able to recognize when the power of God is in operation. And you know the reason is because they are spectacular minded. They are spectacular. That is, they are outside minded people. You know, honey, after the fall of Adam was when man went into the senses. After the fall. Before the fall of Adam, man was not relying on the senses. Because God never ordained for man to be led by the senses. The senses. Touch, feel, smell, taste. That was not the design. But the fall made man, that was all that was available to him. The senses. So he has to feel, he has to taste, he has to smell. And that is why the Old Testament was outward. You know, they had to go to a physical place. They had to do physical things. They had to hold oil. They had to touch things. Because man fell from the supernatural to the natural. But if you come to the New Testament, you find out that the senses are not emphasized at all. Comparing spiritual with spiritual. The natural man cannot because the natural man is sense based. He's ruled by what he can feel, what he can touch, what he can smell, what he can taste. He has to feel something to know that God is there. If he doesn't feel it, he doesn't know it. And when you are like that, when you are sense dependent or reliant on the senses, you will not know when God is moving in a place or the power of God is in operation. You will not know when the power of God is in operation because you are sense ruled. You are sense dominated. You are reliant on the physical, the outward. Mm -mm. So, you must be able to recognize when is the miraculous. You know, you can have a whole congregation receiving differently because of how they recognize the power. People can be receiving differently because of how they recognize God's power. And it's important for you to be able to recognize when the power of God is in operation at any time, in any meeting, in any fellowship, or even on your own, you've got to be able to recognize when God's power is available. Let's look at an instance here quickly. The book of Luke chapter 5 verse number 15. Luke chapter 5 verse number 15. Mm -mm, pay attention. 
But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him. And great multitudes came together to hear. <laughs> they came together to what? To hear. That's the first thing. Don't be in a hurry to be looking for healing. What you should be looking for is hearing. They came to hear. Next verse. I mean, put it back for me. They came together to hear. And after hearing, to be healed by him of their infirmities. So, it is the hearing that will instruct the healing. Did you hear that? It is the hearing of the teaching that will instruct the healing. Now, observe the next verse, 17. Mm -mm. Luke 5, 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and as he was teaching the power of the Lord was present to heal them as he was teaching so question when is the miraculous now when is the miraculous now when can i get a miracle now now not later the power once the power is available miracles are natural once the power is available and what makes the power available is the teaching of the world the teaching of the word. Now, I'm going to read that scripture in a bit, but listen carefully. The healing power or the miraculous could be close by and you don't recognize it. It could be close by and you don't rec recognize it. That's why we emphasize the principle of honor in this ministry. The principle of honor. Because one of the things that can stop you from getting the miraculous or even receiving is dishonor. Dishonor is big, you know. And that's why we, we emphasize all the time honor. Because there's a way to recognize. And you need to realize that the scriptures gives us a pattern. You can always see a pattern where miracles are concerned. So, when is the miraculous? Mark chapter 9 verse 17. Mark chapter 9 verse 17. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which had a dumb spirit. A dumb spirit. Which had what? A dumb spirit. So some people that are dumb, what makes them dumb is a spirit. There is a demon that has sat on their tongue and disabled their speech. So such people, you cast out the spirit of dumbness. And you lose their tongue and they start speaking. It's as easy as that. This sign shall follow those that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils you dumb spirit out tongue be loosed and they start talking i've seen the deaf healed i've seen the dumb healed i have seen the blind eyes opened and the authority of jesus never fails not once is constant now observe this, this, this scenario in Mark chapter 9. Give me verse 18. <clears throat> and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spoke to thy disciples that they should cast him out and they could not. Next verse. 
He answered him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. Next verse. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tore him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. Next verse. <clears throat> and his, he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. That's a long-standing disease. And you know the danger with a long-standing disease is after a while you make it a part of your life. You begin to say, you know my disease. You know I am diabetic. I am. That's who you are. That is, you don't have diabetes. You yourself, you are the diabetes. I am diabetic. You know? You know this, my high blood pressure. You have assumed ownership. I am a diabetic. Me, but I'm diabetic. So everybody knows that your name is diabetes. I'm diabetic. You know? You've, you've owned it. You get used to it. You know my disease, high blood pressure. This my high blood pressure. This my high blood pressure. When it starts, I don't know where I am. This my ulcer. And if it's yours, you keep it. And keep it in the safe. Where no thief can break through to steal. For where your treasure is. So you already identify yourself as diabetic. You can't say that. And say that is the word of God. Even though what you are claiming is what the doctors told you. But that's not what the word of God said. The word of God cannot say, Thus saith the Lord, you are diabetic. The word of God can't say that. That does not appear anywhere in scripture. Someone said, you know, I'm an ulcer patient. And I said to him, you are a patient. You are patient with ulcer. I'm an ulcer patient. And I said to him, you are patient with ulcer. Because you get used to it. The pain came the first time someone prayed for you. And after some time the pain came back and you and the pain settled together. And oftentimes we lose our resolve when time passes from a child. Look at the next verse there. That same Mark chapter 9 verse 22 and 23. And oftentimes it cast him into the fire. The devil is really wicked. Look at where it will cast him. Not into the bed. Not even it cast him into water. It is fire of all places. And into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Kabayada. I love Jesus. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe that your child is not healed, is not delayed from my end. Even now, it doesn't matter how long the disease has been in his body. If you can just believe, all things, put it up, put it up for me quickly. 
all things possible to him that believe it. Thank you, Jesus. To him that believe it. If you can believe, they said, have compassion on us. Jesus said, compassion is not all, that's not all that is needed. If you can believe, if you can believe. In fact, the very first miracle in Matthew chapter 8, Matthew records there in Matthew 8, 3 to 5. Give me Matthew's first miracle. Matthew 8. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will. I will. Look at verse 2. <clears throat> verse 2. Uh, and behold, there came a leper. And what was the next thing that followed? And worshipped him. Somebody shout honor. honor. Can I hear you shout it very loud? Honor. And worshipped him saying Lord Master if thou wilt if you want if you will if you just make up your mind now thou canst make me clean from leprosy Next answer. Next verse 3. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, It is my will. It has always been my will. It is even now my will. And it will always be my will. Be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. I will always. Always it is God's will for you to be in the best state ever. Always. Always. In other words, Jesus is addressing his receiving. That the issue is not with me giving. The issue is with you receiving because if it is left to me, that's my will. That's what I want. If you can believe, all you have said, all you have required, all you have asked is possible. Think about those things in your mind. Think about the things that have been a concern with you. They are possible. I mean, look at the Matthew's account of that of that scenario Matthew 17 20 mm -mm, because Matthew adds some details for us Matthew 17 20 and Jesus said unto them because of your unbelief for verily I say unto you if you have faith if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed you shall say unto this mountain remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Can somebody shout very loud with me? There is no possibility around, there's no impossibility around me. Say all things are possible. Because I am a believer. Even now, I receive a miracle. Of course, Jesus has a wider implication of his statement. But the immediate implication is, if you will say, if you will say, and therefore, when he said, all things are possible to him that believe, you cannot believe without saying. What you do not say, you have not believed. What you do not say, you have not believed. What you say is a reflection of what you believe. What you do not say, you do not believe. What you believe, you say. The righteousness of faith speaketh. And you shall have what you say. You believe, you say, you receive, you have. 
You believe, you say. You receive when you say. Every time you say, that's when you received. And you shall have. You don't receive after. You receive at the point of saying. At the point of saying is when you received. You cannot say without believing. I mean, you can say without believing, but you cannot believe without saying. Let me repeat. You can say something that you did not believe, but you cannot believe without saying. So he said to him, all things are possible. When the parents spoke about it, they had many verses. And sometimes what is required is something simple. If you can believe. <laughs> After the parents narrated history, Jesus responded, if you can believe, all things are possible. Most times, what, what dissolves complicated situations is very simple. That means it's possible to be healed. It's possible to get a miracle now. It's possible if you can believe. So when is the miraculous? The miraculous is when you believe. When you believe. When you believe, the miraculous comes into operation. The miraculous kicks in. You know, look at me, everybody. Let me show you how, what happens. <clears throat> Excuse me. How many of you know that when you get to the hospital and maybe they give you sleeping tablets or something, you know? Is it sleeping tablet they call it, dog? Sleeping tablets. For layman's English, sleeping tablets, okay? S -s -s tablets that help you sleep where you can sleep. Now, when you take the sleeping pills, it doesn't kick in instant. It takes some seconds. Or for some people, even minutes. Okay? Then it kicks in. When the effect of the pill kicks in, your characteristics begin to change. Because it has kicked in. And ultimately, it knocks you out. The moment you believe, and you say you receive, the moment you receive, within seconds, it kicks in. Now you stay there until the full import of what kicks in overwhelms you. That's when you have it. But some of you, when it kicks in, you abort it. You abort it. Because then suddenly you open your mouth and say, this disease is very stubborn. Very stubborn. So what you simply said is that even what I said I receive cannot kick it out. And so many people have a lot of abortions. Miracle abortions. Careless talk. <laughs> now, what we are talking about miracles and healings, that's not believing the gospel. Is different from faith for salvation. Because for miracles, whether you are saved or not, if you just believe that Jesus heals, you get healed. You don't have to be born again to be healed. You don't have to be a child of God to get a miracle. No. This is faith for healing or faith for miracles or faith for supernatural provisions. Please listen carefully. Faith for supernatural provisions. If you believe that your daughter will be healed, it's not if you believe that Jesus rose from the dead. If you believe that your daughter will be healed, 
Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. In other words, when it comes to miracles, what is a miracle? A miracle is an easy word. A miracle in scripture means an actual work of power. An actual work of power. So when you see the word miracle and you see power, is the same in the Greek. Dunamis, dunamos. Power, miracles. is the same. Just the same thing. A miracle is an actual work of power. An actual work of power. It's often referred to as the supernatural. So the power of God, therefore, in demonstration, is what we call miracles. The power of God working in a situation. The power of God, Lakota Manga, when you carry the power of God and you put it on a situation, it starts working. The working of God's power in a situation or a circumstance is what results in a miracle. There can be no miracle without the engagement of God's power. It is the confine of God's power that generates miracles. Am I teaching good? And that power is at work in you right now. To know the exceeding greatness of his power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, that power is inside the believer. The exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working energy there is a working of his mighty power in the believer there's a working even now as you are sitting here that power is at work on your inside somebody said the power of God is at work in me right now. Shout it very loud. The power of God is at work in me right now. Now speak bypass your mind and let your spirit speak it very loud. The power of God is at work in me right now. Say in my body the power of God is at work. Now say I direct that power to my circumstances. Circumstances, the power of God is at work in my circumstances right now. I'm a candidate for a miracle. I thought I would hear powerful amen. The power that raised Christ from the dead. The power that defeated death and the grave. That same power is at work on the inside of the believer. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is at work where? In us there is a working of God's power on the inside of the believer and the believer can operate in miracles at any time. At any time. So miracles are an oppression of God's power. So one of the first things about miracles is it is not logical. Miracles are not logical. Once you are talking of miracles, suspend your thinking. They don't make sense. Miracles don't make sense. Say with me everybody, a miracle is not logical. You know, historians doubt the story of the Exodus. <laughs> they doubt that story. You know the story of the Exodus? Movement of the people out of Egypt to the promised land. The historians doubt that story because they can't explain how for 40 years... People move to the wilderness. No house. No food. No clothes. For 40 years. And we are talking about 3 million people. 3 million. We are not talking of 30 people. We are not talking about 100 persons. We are talking about 3 million people. 
moving at once. Can you imagine? You know, few years ago, Uyo was three million people, right? Three, few years ago. So you can imagine everybody in this city moving out of town. No clothes, no food, nothing. And we survived 40 years. Historians can't explain that. That's why it's a miracle. Once it lacks logical explanation, it's a miracle. Am I communicating at all? Brother R.W. Schambach said, a wonder is something that makes you to wonder. <laughs> a wonder is something that makes you to wonder. Because there's no explanation to a wonder. There's no explanation. Any miracle that can be explained is not a miracle. It must dumbfound your senses. It must render your senses stupid. It must stupefy your senses such that when they say, how did your eyes open? He said, one thing I know. Once I was blind. Now, somebody shout, I believe in miracles. Say it again, I believe in miracles. Ladies and gentlemen, Christianity is a miracle. The birth of Jesus is a miracle. The resurrection of Jesus is a miracle. The forgiveness of sins is a miracle. To be born again is a miracle. So everything about Christianity is a miracle. The rapture of the church will be a miracle. Because mortality shall put on immortality. I feel like I'm preaching good this morning. The totality of the Christian faith is enshrined in miracles. He says, so is everyone that is born of God. You cannot tell where he's coming from. You cannot tell where he's going to. But you hear the sound. A believer is a sign and a wonder. I am my children that God has given to me. We are for signs and wonders. I thought somebody would shout, I'm a wonder to my world. We are for signs and wonders. Shakataba. Metolada. The born again man is not a normal man. I declare over you today, you cease to live an ordinary life. I say from this moment you cease to live an ordinary life from this moment the miraculous will be a lifestyle for you somebody shout I receive I declare my life is covered with the miraculous please sit and give me a few minutes I'll soon be done Hegebo Zakayada Miracles don't make sense. A miracle doesn't make sense. You know, I tell doctor friends of mine because doctors keep treating patients with logic. They do their research, they do their test, then they find something in nature that can solve something in nature. That's medical science. Medical science is a discovery of natural solutions for natural conditions. That's medical science. A discovery of natural solutions for natural conditions. So that's why in medical science, there's calculation, there's analysis, there's prognosis, Abby. Prognosis. <laughs> there's prognosis, Abby. And what else? And, and diagnosis. Prognosis and diagnosis. It sounds like some tongue. <laughs> that's why every time doctors talk, it's like tongues. But those tongues don't have interpretation. It's only interpreted in their, in their world. Am I communicating at all? So because of the depth they have in studying sickness and disease, they stand at a point where medical doctors are the greatest unbelievers of miracles. Medical doctors. Sometimes it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a doctor to receive a miracle. Because when you are speaking to the condition, they are seeing the analysis. The clinical analysis. They are seeing 
they are seeing how that it is not possible. They are seeing everything, how it has degenerated. They know the end point, medically. That's why medical doctors sometimes, when a miracle happens, and you ask them, what's going on there? They will say, he's getting better. <laughs> he's getting better. They will never say, he is healed. They will say, he's getting better. <laughs> he's getting better. Because they don't want to break a medical rule. He's getting better. <laughs> he's not getting better, doc. He's healed. This man is healed. Glory to God. I'm teaching good this morning. Yet there is wisdom that is given to them which is not of the devil. Don't get me wrong. Medical science is not of the devil. Medical science is of God. Anything that helps people to get better is of God. Satan has never helped anybody get better. He's a killer, a stealer, and a destroyer. Jesus never called physicians terrible or terrible people. In fact, Paul had an assistant or an associate who was a medical doctor. His name was Luke the physician. He wrote the book of Luke and the book of Acts. And those books are filled with miracle accounts. I'm talking about Luke the physician. Brother Paul's companion. So a miracle is an actual display of power. An actual display of power. And is supernatural. And it's not the natural means of things happening. That is when a miracle happens, it bypasses nature. It bypasses the natural process. It is supernatural. It is the actual display of God's power. So which means when things are impossible in the natural, then there's the power of God to intervene. So the intervention of God in the course of nature is a miracle. The intervention of God in the course of nature is a miracle. Hallelujah. So when is it possible? In the natural. When you believe. When you speak. Of course in the natural. It doesn't make sense. A miracle is that which happens. That is not logically explained. It is not logically explained, which means that when it is the miraculous, I am not logical. I am not trying to calculate or analyze what I am thinking. I am saying the power of God is working right now. I'm not thinking. Because at that time, my thinking is not required. Because a miracle is not a mind thing, it's a spirit thing. So it means that a miracle suspends the natural process. A miracle will always suspend the natural process. Is that instantaneous, spontaneous suspension of the natural course of things. Spontaneous, instantaneous suspension of the natural course of events. For example, there's a growth that you keep growing. Then it stops and never grows again. That's a miracle. Because naturally, it should keep growing. But there is an intervention that interrupted the process. And instead of growing, it shrinks. It shrinks. Tumors melt. And suddenly, lumps in the breast melt and disappear. That have the tendency to be cancerous. Yet, when the power of God moves into that part of the body, it in interrupts the natural process. Everything that was fertilizing the growth is rendered impotent. That's a miracle. Limbs that were weak. Limbs that were weak. 
that could not carry your body. So because they could not carry your body, a depreciation has happened to the limbs. Then the power of God moves into those limbs, suspends the weakness, restores the nerves, the tissues, the tendons, the muscles, and the limbs to strength. And then all of a sudden, a man that could not stand up, stands up. And he's able to stand. What happened? A miracle. An intervention of the super over the natural. And it's available to you now. We're not talking about a future thing. Your eyes that were diminishing. That you could hardly see. The power of God moves in there. And hey, the power is not coming from heaven. The power is not coming from heaven. The power is already inside you. We just took off that power by speaking. We redirected that power to the eyes. And the moment the power entered the eyes, it suspended nature. And suddenly, the eyes can see. Am I teaching here? That's a miracle. That's a miracle. In the natural, impossible. In the spiritual, possible. Please, pay attention. Someone is due for surgery. And she comes with an appointment. The question I will ask is, what do you believe for? I will never tell you not to go for surgery. And I will never tell you to go. What do you believe for? She says, I don't believe in the surgery. I agree with you. So she goes home. No surgery. Not because I told her, but because she took a position with the word of God. And I supported her position with my faith. So I and her are in faith that the surgery is over. And from that moment, we redirect God's power to suspend nature and cause what will have created the need for surgery to be rendered impotent. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. That's a miracle. Somebody is supposed to be fired in his office. And we redirect God's power to that office. And the power of God moves into that office and shakes the organization. The power enters the office and shakes that organization. And in the midst of shaking, things shifted. Then suddenly the office realizes they cannot sack you. Because after this sudden shakings that have happened, your office, your position here has become too relevant. We, can, we cannot send you away. That's a miracle. Am I teaching? That's a miracle. And it's available to the believer. The report of the doctor is not evil. But that's just a natural cause of things. You need a miracle because the natural cause of things is unpredictable and unreliable. You know, sometimes they operate somebody and the problem comes back. There are people that have been operated from the same condition two, three times. And they are not even sure they will not need another operation. But with God's power, and you know the natural, the natural, the natural is too cumbersome. For them to operate you, they have to make sure you are physically fit. If you are not, they put you on a diet. Then when you are physically fit, they now open you up. For hours, they cut you blood and all kinds of things are tampered with. You are suspended from everything you are doing. Then the doctors eventually package you back together. You have to go through a recovery process. And what they did is not guaranteed. And sometimes, mistakenly, they could could cover a scissors inside. So they have to open it again and remove the scissors. You remember the lab in Nigeria that saw cockroach in somebody's chest. Then he went to India for operation. When they did the, 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 the lab test in India, they discovered that the cockroach was in, their, in the x-ray machine. 
You are not hearing. The cockroach was not inside the chest. The cockroach was inside the x-ray machine. So when the x-ray was taking place, because of where the cockroach was positioned, it reflected in the heart of the person. So they told him, you have a cockroach in your heart. We can't operate it here. You must go to India. He flies to India. Look at flight tickets. Look at hotel bills. He may have sold his house or sold his land to go to India. Having arrived in India for the professionals to do their job, they don't trust your x-ray report so they have to confirm in their own report no cockroach then as they check the x-ray you brought from nigeria they discovered that the cockroaches were so skillful in operation that they found a comfortable place to stay in your machine without your machine detecting them so when it has to do with the natural there are so many things that are limited but when it has to do with the super the super natural when the power of God moves, which is already inside you. Am I talking to somebody here? The moment the power of God moves on the situation, it suspends nature and it does a perfect job. No operation, no money required, no cutting of the body, no endangering the life, nothing. It just happens instant and spontaneous. God is a good God. God is a good God. He knew that after the fall of man, the body of man will be subject to mortality. So disease and all kinds of elemental conditions will affect the body. So he made available his power. And let me tell you what the power of God does. The power of God is creative. So if an organ of your body has been damaged, when the power of God moves into operation, it can recreate that organ. Where the doctor say woman has no womb. When God's power moves into her body, it creates a womb. Suddenly, she's pregnant and she has a child. They say the man does not have sperm or his sperm is low. The power of God moves into his sperm system and suddenly he is pregnant in his wife with triplets. What's happened? The course of nature is suspended. I believe in miracles. Oh, you know, I have seen too many miracles in my life. In my own life as Abel Damina, I have seen miracles in, not the one I prayed for people, in my own personal life. I have experienced miracles upon miracles. It is too late for anybody to tell me that the day of miracles are over. It is too late. I'm not talking about headaches. I'm talking about diseases that have the ability to terminate life. Diseases that could take away life. Where doctors already looked at me and shook their head. You know, when doctors look at you and do their head, it's over. It's over. And I'm not talking about doctors I don't know. These are even doctors that were part of my ministry. They looked at me. Two of them, husband and wife, medical doctors. They looked at me and shook their head. The wife started weeping because they love me. The wife wept and walked out. The husband looked at me and said, we'll be back to check. But with them, medically, it was over. When they left and I knew that now I have to make up my mind whether to go or to stay. I remember the gospel that I owe the world. I took my Bible and walked my, my way through the scriptures. I began to see accounts of miracles. I read and read. I was just seeing account of miracles. The reality of the miraculous overshadowed my mind. I stood up and I said in the name of Jesus right now I receive a miracle. That, was the, that night was the end. By the next day, I broke out in sweat. I stood up and did what I couldn't do for days. Two days after, I was preaching in another city. That was the end of that disease. I've seen too many miracles in my life. I've seen too many miracles in my life. Too many. Too many miracles. Jessie Mel, my second daughter, in her mother's womb, 
The doctor right here in Aquaibum on a Sunday morning looked at my wife and said, you are carrying a dead child. The child is dead. The doctor checked. The midwives checked. Everybody checked and said, the child is not alive. We have to evacuate the pregnancy. Mama said, you have to wait for my husband. I was preaching that Sunday morning. I finished preaching and I got to the hospital. Mama said to me, the doctor said the child is not alive. They want to evacuate. I said, no, <laughs> you can't carry a dead child for nine months in my house. You can't carry a dead child for nine months in my house. No, it's not possible. It's not possible. I said to her, where is the doctor? Let me talk to him. And I went to that doctor, Dr. Etina. You know, Etina, one, one hospital there. Ubonga Basi, I hear he's, he's going to be with Jesus. I went to him. I said, Doc, don't touch, according to Ghanaians, don't touch that baby. He said, why? I said, my wife can't carry a dead child. He said, but medically we have examined. I said, no. Go again and check. He said, no, the last thing we can do now is a scan. I said, so what stops it? He said, well, it will cost you a little money. I said, I'm ready to pay. He said, okay, it will be tomorrow morning. I said, no problem. Tomorrow morning, go do it. Then when you do it, let me know. I told mama, relax. You will deliver this baby. Relax. Relax. You remember now? Relax. You will deliver this baby. The next morning, early in the morning, they took her to go and scan. They scanned and came back. Mama sent for me. I got to the hospital. The doctor, as soon as I entered his office, stood up and said, I'm sorry, sir my apologies i said you better be sorry he said that baby is alive i said i told you <laughs> i told you not in my house i know that a miracle took place between that afternoon and the following morning a miracle took place a miracle took place you make up your mind whether you want to accept the condition or you want to unleash God's power to suspend nature and create a miracle. You make up your mind. The choice is yours. There are two ways you can go about it. You can go about it naturally and you can go about it supernaturally. And this is not just for body healing. This is not just for, for sicknesses. Even for circumstances, conditions, your job, your, your, your work, your businesses, your career. Miracles are available because God's power does not have a limitation. God's power operates anywhere and everywhere. Am I talking to somebody here? All it takes is for you to believe it. And when you believe it, you say it, you receive it, you have it. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. God's power is creative. God's power is restorative. And God's power is curative. Are you following? God's power is preservative. It is creative. Where a creative miracle is needed, the power of God, the same power will create it is curative where a cure is needed the same power will cure it is it is it is it is restorative where your leg has been chopped off or your hand has been chopped off short hands can grow short legs can grow missing womb can grow underdeveloped organs in your body can develop there's no limit to the operation of God's power I believe in miracles I believe in miracles I've seen the dead raised two days dead brought back to life I've seen too many miracles in my life to ever look at a situation and say it's impossible seen too many miracles i've seen too many in different realms of life i've seen preservative the preservative power of god when all kinds of things break loose to attack your life and god preserves you god puts kabayota god just the power of god just creates a canopy around you a canopy and the power of god just physically stays there like a pillar 
things are coming but they are not able to get the effect you see them boom 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 from everywhere you're just standing and after everything as if nothing happened you continue life is the preservative power of god am i talking to somebody here somebody say that power is in me that power is at work in me right now that power is at work and miracles are already happening right now all over this place online on television on radio miracles are already happening right now in this service miracles are already happening right now i didn't hear that amen like thunder stand on your feet let me pray a miracle prayer for you this morning say with me i believe in miracles i'm a candidate for a miracle right now i receive miracles right now I didn't hear powerful amen. Yeah. Lift up your two hands. I want to pray. If you're watching online, I want to pray. On television, on radio, I want to pray. Miracles are going to happen instantly. We're going to have instant miracles right now all over this place. Now, as you lift up your hand just before I pray, if there's a condition in your body you need a miracle for, place your hand on that condition. If it's a growth, touch the growth and begin to just you know begin to press on that growth if it is a leg condition put your hand on that leg if it's a knee put your hand on that knee if it's a waist touch the waist if it's your eyes put your hand on your eyes if it's in your you know wherever part of your body just place your hand on that part of your body and if it's the totality of your body you don't even know where it is happening put your two hands on your head matola koroto sakela and i want to have your amens like thunder as i pray right now in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, I speak to every natural limitation, every disease, sickness. I come against barrenness, deafness, dumbness. I rebuke eye conditions. In the name of Jesus, I come against disease in the body heart disease liver disease kidney disease in the name of jesus satan get your hands off every oppression of the devil be broken be broken be broken in the name of jesus matala batananga negrato shakata brede sokula nanga egereto sikaladaba I rebuke ulcers, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, out in the name of Jesus. Where you need a creative miracle, I speak the creative power of God into that area of your body. Receive a creative miracle. Receive a restorative miracle. Receive a curative miracle. In the name of Jesus. Those of you in need of business miracles, career miracles, miracles for jobs, employment, whatever area of your circumstances you require a miracle, we release the power of God in that situation right now. Receive a miracle. Receive, 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 receive. In the name of Jesus. Two more are disappearing growths are melting fibroids melting lungs melting out pain go go pain go discomfort go deaf ears open open sight restored sight restored sight restored jacota melika zapota mabara Low sperm count restored, healed, and restored. Jakota, Medalota Sikia. Every problem with your limbs, with your ankles, every problem with your kidneys, your liver restored in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father all over this place all over this place all over this place the power of god is moving all over this house <laughs> the power of god is moving all over this place all over this place that's it that's it the anointing 
That's the anointing. That's the anointing of God. That's the power that raised Christ from the dead. That's that power. It's moving all over the house, moving all over the internet, moving all over television, moving all over radio. That's God's power. It's moving all over. Nekora, Takola, Jekola, 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 Jekola. Nekro dosoka ladababa. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Agabo Father, we give you praise. Lift your hands and begin to praise him. Begin to bless him. Begin to bless him. <laughs> begin to bless him. Begin to bless him. Your name is a miracle. Your name is a comforter. Your name is a mighty God Jesus your name your name is a miracle your name check that side of your ear if there was a growth in your body check your body right now miracles are happening all over this place i'd like you to do what you couldn't do before we're going to shout and celebrate if you couldn't run run if you couldn't jump jump if you couldn't scream scream go ahead and let's celebrate give the lord a shout all over this place. give him a shout give him a shout give him a shout give him a shout glory in this house This 
you're hearing the sound of my voice men are arranged men and systems are arranged situations have been arranged right now to work in your favor the delay is cancelled the delay is suspended in the name of Jesus receive receive good news miracle phone calls miracle emails that check is signed those your papers for citizenship have been approved they have been approved they have been approved that job you're tendered for has been approved that money you've been waiting for has just been signed receive it in the name of Jesus thank you father in Jesus precious name I didn't hear your amen. amen say it three times very loud I believe in miracles I two I three I can I have a powerful amen? amen now listen to me in a few minutes I'm going to pick a few testimonies because I know many things have happened here but I want to quickly take your offerings your honor offerings let's do that get it out of the way and those of you online if you know you, you got testimonies things have happened to you in the course of this service you can just shoot us a, an email and share with us what God has done you know for you this morning it's very it's very important we love to share in your testimonies and sharing the things that God has done for you but want to take up your offerings in honor of God's word <clears throat> every time we give we give in faith and every time we give we give with joy our giving is in honor of the labor of God's word so we want to do that right now and I want to thank all of you partners and friends who continually give to this ministry to help us get this word to the ends of the earth and I want to pray over our givings right now. And next Sunday is partnership service. Next Sunday is partnership service. So partners, let's get our finances ready, organized for partnership Sunday next week. Praise God. Lift up your offerings, everybody, wherever you are. Lift up the offerings online, their banking details on television, their banking details. Father, we, we rejoice. Thank you for the privilege to give in honor of your word and we give in faith. And we declare and decree right now that our offerings are a sweet smell before you. And we rejoice for the honor of honoring your word. And we thank you for the many things that have happened to us even within the last one hour in this service. And we give you praise. Thank you that needs are met. Thank you that testimonies abound. Thank you that great things have occurred in the course of this service. In Jesus precious name. And every believer says a powerful amen. Now listen to me, before we sign you off, I'm going to continue this teaching in the next service on Wednesday and next Sunday, first and second service. All right now, but listen carefully. We launched out a massive campaign this week on social media. We launched out a massive campaign because there are so many people in darkness, so many people bound by religion and tradition. We're talking about 7 billion people in the world to reach with the gospel. And social media has given us an opportunity to reach at least 2.5 billion people. At least 2.5 billion people on social media. And the next one month, we want to capitalize on the leverage that social media enables us to get the message out. Two things you're going to do for me. Number one, I want you to continually pray. Every time you remember, just say a word of prayer. That as people are stumbling over our teachings on social media and on different platforms, that the Holy Ghost will quicken a word that will challenge their minds and cause them to seek for more. Are you understanding? That's the prayer. That as they just stumble on our videos all over social media, the Holy Ghost will spark a curiosity in their hearts to want to seek for more. That's the first thing. The second thing apart from prayer is I'm looking for people to support me because it's going to cost us quite some money and you know to, to get the campaigns on social media. It's going to cost us quite some money. So I'm looking for people to support me with some money this week. You want to help me with $100, $50? You want to help me with $500, $200? You know, you want to help me. I, I need you to help me because the reason why I'm calling dollars is because all the social media platforms is in dollars we pay for the things we do. Alright, so that's why we're asking you for dollars. So if you want to support me with $50, $100, $200, $500, you've been affected by what is going on on social media and you want others to be affected. All you need to do is shoot me an email today. 
shoot me an email and we will send you an account where you will send the money to. You will send it to a dedicated account specifically for this global campaign. If you want to help me online, it's very important so we can get the word out. And I want to thank you for being willing and available and obedient to help us get this project out. The, the, the harvest that is coming through the social media campaign is massive and there's much more yet coming. And we want you, lastly, to help us. If you come across the video, share it on your page. If you come across it, take it, put on your own page so that people in your own community will have access to it. Share it on your page. All those videos, there are so many of them. Just keep sharing them. Keep sharing them. Let, let God use your page to reach other people. Make your page a missionary page. Get the word out there. That's the last thing you do for us. So, again, if you're going to support us, shoot a mail to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. And we will email you a dedicated account for this specific outreach. All right? Online. But I want you to know we love you and thank you for the privilege you give us all the time to serve you the grace of God. We look forward to seeing all of you at the 11 o'clock service this morning. And we're expecting a lot of testimonies from all over the world. But we're excited to have all of you in the service this morning. Look, looking forward to see you at 11 o'clock. And until then, enjoy the grace of Christ. Let's celebrate viewers around the world for being a part of this service this morning. Glory! Amen! Woo! Hot. By this message. For these all the messages and books by Dr. Abel Damina. Please call plus 234-806-800-9939 or email powercityoffice at gmail.com.